Hello, thank you for listening. This is the near-death experience of Casey, and this experience occurred on December 16th, 2016, and it was documented on March 11th, 2017, so a little less than four months. Open quote. I broke the L4 and L5 vertebrae while on duty with the sheriff's office, Mm -hmm. causing me to have major back surgery. I had broken them so badly that after surgery, I saw that I was cut from my navel to halfway down my left side to fix what couldn't be fixed going in through the back. While lying there in the hospital, my brain decided to remember all my friends killed in Vietnam. After coming home, my physical and mental strength went down. In 2004, I went out to my car put a gun to my head and cocked it twice. A voice, I believe God or an angel, told me to put it down because help would come. I was rated 100% disabled with PTSD by the Veterans Administration. I had been hurting more than usual, so I went to my pain doctor. After testing my nerves from my back down, he said major surgery was needed with a 50-50 chance of helping. I opted out of surgery. Afterwards, I got to where I very seldom went anywhere and would cancel any appointments that I had made. PTSD is a monster. On December 16, 2016, I decided God was tired of me hurting so much that it would be okay to take all my pain medications at once. I spread it out over two hours. I was convinced by the PTSD and the devil that God wanted me to come home this way. Even so, occasionally I would say, God, if this is a sin, please forgive me. After I had taken all the pills, my brother walked in and asked me, what's happening? I told him what I had done, and he immediately took me to the emergency room where I was immediately admitted. That night something happened. I realized that I was floating down a long white corridor like a tunnel. I was moving towards the most beautiful white light that I had ever seen. It was so beautiful that our words cannot describe it. I was experiencing complete peace and tranquility with no fear or worry. Then I realized I had no body. In fact, my consciousness was floating slowly towards the beautiful light and I was ready to go. When I was very close to the light, I heard a noise behind me. I didn't know what was making the noise, nor did I care, until I started floating back towards it. First, I went back slowly, then it got faster. Suddenly, my eyes flew open, and a nurse's face was right there yelling, Casey, answer me! And I said, hi. The nurses were all around me, with a doctor looking over their shoulders. I still don't know what all these nurses were doing, but I was back. At first, I was busy trying to figure out what had happened. Then I knew that I had died and apparently was approaching heaven. I didn't tell anyone for a long time what had happened because I kept going over it in my mind. End quote. Wow. That's a tough situation, Casey. There are some questions here. At the time of your experience, was there an associated life-threatening event? Answer yes. Suicide attempt, drug or medication overdose, clinical death. Question, how do you consider the content of your experience? Answer, entirely pleasant. Question, did you feel separated from your body? Answer, yes. The only thing I heard was the noise behind me. I didn't understand it until right before my eyes opened. The nurse was saying the same thing I was hearing when my eyes opened. I clearly left my body. Question, at what time during the experience were you at your highest level of consciousness or alertness? Answer, when I realized I was in the white tunnel and going towards the most beautiful white light I had ever seen. Question, were your senses more vivid than usual? Answer, yes, more vivid than usual. Question, comparing your vision. Answer, my vision was normal for my age, a little farsighted, but not bad. Now that I think about it, my vision was perfect. I had no trouble looking around, and everything was clear. Question, did you pass into or through a tunnel? Answer, yes. I have no recollection of getting there because my last conscious memory was being in a hospital bed. 
I don't remember going to sleep. I was watching TV one minute and then was gone. I was in a white corridor floating towards the most beautiful white light that defies description. Question. Did you see an unearthly light? Answer, yes. The fantastically beautiful white light I was floating towards was unlike any other light I had ever seen. It was in a white corridor drifting towards it and felt no fear or trepidation. As bright as the light was, it didn't overpower the white walls of the corridor. The light was very bright, but looking at it, I realized it didn't hurt my eyes. Question. Did you seem to enter some other unearthly world? Answer. I was in a long white corridor like a tunnel. It had three walls, but I don't remember a floor. The walls were smooth and seemed to slope down gently. I don't remember feeling anything strange like what I would expect if I had entered into something unfamiliar or creepy. There was absolutely no fear, anxiety, trepidation, or bodily signs of fear. Question. What importance did you place on your religious slash spiritual life prior to your experience? Answer, greatly important to me. Question, what was your religion prior to your experience? Answer, Christian Protestant. I had gotten extremely depressed because I had broken my back years earlier and had major back surgery. I believe God wanted me to come home. Even though I really believe God wanted this a few times, I said, God, if I'm, if I'm committing a sin, please forgive me. Question, have your religious practices changed since your experience? Answer, no. Christian, what is your religion now? Answer, Christian Protestant. I'm a strong Baptist, strong believer in God. I had two combat tours in Vietnam. First one in the jungle for 12 months. In my next tour, I was a door gunner on a helicopter. There's no doubt that there were times that I would have died if God hadn't intervened. Question, did your experience include features consistent with your earthly belief? Answer, content that was entirely consistent with the beliefs that I had at the time. I have read about experiences where someone was passing through a tunnel toward a white light, but nothing about whether they saw or if they knew they, still, they were still in a body. I realized I wasn't in a body, but only my consciousness was floating towards the light. Also, I was in a rectangular box with white sides, but the light I was floating towards was the awe-inspiring white. Question. Did you seem to encounter a mystical being or presence or hear an unidentifiable voice? Answer. I heard a voice I could not identify. I was getting close to the light, and then suddenly I heard an annoying sound behind me. <laughs> I really wasn't paying attention to the noise because I was very close to the light and wanting to go in. I heard the noise again and quit floating towards the light. Then I started slowly started going backwards. I didn't care what the noise was. I didn't understand it other than a noise. Then I heard it again and went faster backwards, but couldn't see where I was going. I heard the noise start, and right in the middle of the sound, my eyes popped open. A nurse had been yelling at me to talk to her, so I answered her. Question. During your experience, did you gain information about pre-mortal existence? Answer. Yes, I was on my knees in what appeared to be a medieval battlefield. Looking around, all I could see were dead bodies in various stages of dismemberment. I could also smell the field. I spent two tours in Vietnam, so I know what the smell of death is. This battle couldn't have been long over because the smell of death hadn't gotten that bad yet. In fact, it had probably just finished because I saw armored legs walking, around, walking towards me and a sword in the right hand. The cool breeze felt good on my face and I was so very tired. I couldn't even raise my head high enough to see the man's face coming at me. I know it couldn't be a dream because I had never smelled anything before nor felt breezes. Finally, the legs stopped in front of me and as and soon as they do, I feel a hand grab my hair on back of my head. It seems I had long hair. I never heard nor saw the man behind me. Guess I was concentrating on trying to lift my head high enough to see who was in front of me. I was so totally exhausted and not very alert. My head was jerked back sharply. The legs took a short step forward and a blur passed in front of my face. 
I felt the sword enter my chest between my breast armor and the base of my throat. Then it rapidly went deeper, and I felt it hit my heart. Soon as it hit my heart, the same brilliant white light flashed, and that's it. This is the first time I've told anybody about this and didn't realize I remembered so much. It was totally real, and like I said, I never remembered details like I did. Hmm. Question. What life changes occurred in your life after your experience? Answer, no changes in my life. Other than being shown what happens after death, there have been no changes. Question. Was the experience difficult to express in words? Answer. Yes. I really didn't know how to tell people that I wasn't aware of being in a body. In fact, I had a hard time describing the feeling to myself. I felt the same as when I had a body, but realized I had no pain, depression, or any of the negatives that I had become used to. I hadn't felt this good since my younger days. Question. How accurately do you remember the experience? Answer. More accurately, I still remember every aspect of the experience where other things fade around exact details after a time none of this has. None of this one has. The death experience I had in the field of bodies I also still remember in stark detail. Question. Do you have any psychic, non-ordinary, or other special gifts after your experience that you did not have before the experience? Answer, no. Question. Are there one or several parts of your experience that are especially meaningful or significant to you? Answer. Only the peaceful end where I didn't even realize I had died but was floating towards the light. No hysterical feelings nor fear was felt. Question. Have you ever shared this experience with others? Answer. Yes. My mom was dying from cancer. When we were alone, I took her hand and I told her I believed God wanted me to share it with her. She died a week later but never expressed any fear. I know she had a strong belief in God, and I think my talk helped her in her final days. Question. What do you believe about the reality of your experience shortly after it happened? Answer. Experience was definitely real. Everything was very real to me. I had no doubt what had happened. There had been no dimming of what had happened. I went from floating to seeing the nurse that had been yelling my name. No dream has ever ended like that. <clears throat> Question. Is there anything else you would like to add about your experience? Answer. I was in combat one day where we were ambushed. The ambush was set so well there wasn't an easy way out, so we attacked the ambush straight on twice and were repulsed. There was no help available to help us in time. We all agreed to die on our feet. When I realized I was going to die, my brain totally accepted it. I became extremely calm and decided I was going to kill as many of them as I could. I hoped I could make them kill me, but if not, I hoped I could shoot myself in the head and not be captured. We hit the ambush again, and suddenly we broke through to safety. I realized the air smelled cleaner, the colors were brighter, and it felt like we had been born again. I suppose that's the closest to death I had come without actually dying. And it appears that there's additional correspondence that Casey uh, gave here on 12-23-17. So, um, you know, a little less than a week later, or about a week later. So, open quote. Don't know if I mentioned this, but while getting closer to the light, I decided to look down. I didn't have my human body. There were four non-glowing gold spheres that tapered down with no discernible feet. I could feel something over my head, but couldn't see it. The most shocking thing now to me is that I didn't freak out, but felt normal. I had no remembrances of my earthly life. I didn't remember my parents, son, no one. All I felt was as if everything was normal, 
as I peaceably was getting very close to the light. I must be going somewhere most people don't go, as I didn't see any of my loved ones waiting on me. Has anyone else had an experience like mine? The only person I've talked to about it is my brother, and he looked kind of weird at me. So that convinced me to tell anybody else about my body, only that I had a near-death experience. Another experience, my mom was lying in a hospital bed dying from cancer. She was trying not to show it, but knowing her, I could see the concern in her eyes. One day, she and I were alone, and I told her, and God told me to tell her about my experience because I hadn't told her before. I sat down on the edge of her bed, took her hand in mine, and she looked at me, her only child, with tears running down her face, breaking my heart. But I gave her the only gift a son can give his dying mother, comfort and hope. I said, Mom, that night when I was in the hospital, I didn't tell you about what really happened. I was given some kind of med to help me sleep, and I reacted to it. Mom, I died that night. Her eyes widened and tears came faster, but before she could say anything, I went on. I believe God wanted me to be here with you and tell you that there's nothing to worry about. You don't even know when you're, go when you're gone. I promise that. You will be completely at peace, slowly moving towards God's brilliant, most beautiful white you've ever seen before. You'll know what serenity means and feel the glory of God through the light. I firmly believe he sent me back to comfort you in your time of need. So don't worry about anything, mother. You're in God's comforting hands. The entire time I was talking, she didn't move nor ever take her eyes from mine, and I could see the terror was gone. I had been rubbing her hand all the time, and I felt the tension leave her hand. She laid back down, and for the first time, she wasn't stiff, but more relaxed. More relaxed than she had been, with a calm look on her face and a special mommy smile at me. They sent her home the next day, and the day after that, she died. I still remember everything about my experience with crystal clarity. I also know there's no mention in our holy books about prior lives, but the one I described is also crystal clear. I can still feel the sword blade pushing into my chest, and definitely when it hit my heart, and the brilliant white light flashed when he hit my heart. Oh well, we're promised that all will be made clear. Question, are there any other questions that we could ask to help you communicate your experience? Answer, you have covered it as well as I believe you can. You gave ample opportunity to explain what we could and ask questions that prompted thought when needed. Thanks, end quote. And I guess the, um, the medieval scene may have been his prior life. When uh, he last saw the light, I don't know. Touching story. Thank you for listening.